Since the ban of beach driving, a lot of anglers hardly ever see the beauty of our coastline. And it really pays off when you get to the good spot to take a bit of a walk and explore new areas and the beauty of our coastline. This is a perfect example when you go to the beach at Port Dunford. Walking north turns into a picturesque fishing destination. Guys, we reached a spot here. Um, oh, there's many names in this area. Second River or Second Stream and Chiefs and whatever. But we come down from uh, Port Dunford, I reckon about three k's walk. And there's a nice area here that works on the low tide where you can wade out a bit. It doesn't look as good as the last time I've been here. And it worries me a bit of a cold front. Cold wind today, a lot of rain over the sea. So I hope that doesn't affect our fishing too much. But this looks like about the best uh, potential spot in an hour or so. Bit of a trough and then a nice bank. And we can see if we can get over there and get a couple of casts in before the tide pushes too high again. And uh, always nice kind of walking out of the crowds. Seeing this nature as it is here on the beaches in an area that's safe, that you know is safe. Take a good walk, go look at the area, find your own water. That's part of fishing and uh, the nice part of it is looking for spots that will work for you. Um, I think with the light stick and the scratching and light packed, you ought to fish this whole section all the way. Try the little holes, different tides. It would be actually a really nice uh, excursion to do that. But yeah, we're gonna see what we can get today. Um, no one <laughs> actually got mowing them on the beach at Dunford, but they didn't want to walk. So uh, we're here on our own, and we'll have a, have a look, see what we can find. About two and a half kilometers north, there's a spot called Second Stream, which is a lovely, lovely area, if the conditions allow. Now, yes, sometimes you can take the whole walk and get here, and the trough is too deep to get through onto the back bank. But the scenery is well worth it, and anyone who puts in the time for some edibles will be well rewarded. Put the three toothpicks to hold my bait, three pieces, and just uh, secure them with a the cotton as well. There we go. It's the carbon coated dangle, mustard ring, make a little loop with a mustard crimp, then I add foam to it, lots of cotton, and then the three toothpicks ready to go and then our bait. This time of the year and in this area, mackerel plays an important and vital role in getting bigger fish to take your bait. It is always safe to have some mackerel with you. Maybe some red eye and have some chocker handy in case there's pickers. A nice mackerel bomb bait should do the trick. Alright, it's still a good two hours, a little bit more to uh, low tide. So I can't get on that back bank yet. So what I did is I just flicked it over that back bank. Literally 10, 20 meters you're getting over it. But maybe there's still a diamond or something lying just behind the bank there. Feeding on everything that's washing out here. So I'm not going to sit and wait, I'd rather have a bite there and see. Very deep trough that washed out here. Now we've still got an hour to go for low, probably an hour, hour and a half. But uh, in the last couple of weeks it's washed out deep here. Probably about still two meters deep here. And it sucks because the bank's not so big. It sucks that way and it sucks that way. So, I'm not happy where we're lying. We're at least over the lip, over the back bank, about 40 meters. But I think right now, oh, I would love to be further. And it's nice and low enough now to get to the back there. So now the bait's in deep water. Only thing that worries me is that the northwest that blew this whole morning 
and then a little bit of a northeast started puffing and it's gone. But the water started cleaning up quite a lot. And you can feel the temperature has gone up. So I hope we can still buy a white here. The first bike took off with a storm, almost like a hammerhead and had me really confused. It picked up my bait and came in with a speed. After that it moved in different direction at high speed, unlike the expected diamond fight. interesting fight. What made this a bigger challenge is the fact that the water still sucked back very strong and you had a double lip, two banks, one far in the back to get the fish onto, over, into the trough and then over the front. This fish is giving me a good time. Proper tusk. That took me so fast I didn't even feel anything before and it just came in with a speed I thought I was bitten off. Now it's sitting in the back lip. Can't seem to get away to get him over. Notice how the grindy lead bends. Most of the action sits on the tip, giving it a much bigger response, less strain on your back, and a lot of pulling power. Most of the species we target in South Africa are quite cunning and clever fighters, always using the water, currents and drag to their advantage. I was surprised to see it's a diamond, but a really strong one and every now and again you cross paths with a really strong diamond. Another diamond seems like they're the flavour still. I actually thought that was something else, the hardest fighting diamond I've ever caught. Just gave me carrot. I actually thought it was a big eagle. But yeah, diamond. Give me a proper run for my money, but it got its teeth in properly. Okay, guys, now we all know the diamond you pull, you pull it, but every now and again you find a little Charlie like this one who had jungle oats or something this morning because the water isn't that cold and he just goes berserk. He picked me up typically like a big smooth hound or a hammerhead. It came, or a honey, it came in with a speed, it, I didn't even feel him pick up. It's as if he was checking how fast he could go, and his mouth was open, and my boat happened to land in it. Because <laughs> I thought I got bitten off, and then it just took off, and by the time it connected again, it was about 60 meters to the right from where I cast it. That took off. And I was using a bite trace, look at that. Uh, eight toe circle. That's unfortunate. Started bending open a bit. But I had the assist hook which eventually hooked him. Maybe this came out. Because it wasn't hooked when I unhooked it now. And that's why I like fishing a assist hook. The 6 0 uh, catfish, mustad. And that's what eventually landed it because I pulled as hard as, as possible on that fish. When it came over that bank where we caught from, um, it went and sucked onto it and all I did is you release your line completely and you just wait and you'll feel it go again after a while. You can shoot your line, I did that, it didn't work and then I just released, same as what I would do with the rock hood. And then it just lifted up, it felt there's no tension, lifted up, tried to swim away and then managed to get him in. like it's 
it's already biting. I just came back from the coast. But this time around, we're going to get our cameraman, who yesterday caught for the first time in his life a shad, or a saltwater fish, being a shad, he's going to fight the next one. I want to see him tussle that as soon as it takes it, and we hook him up. All right, our cameraman, yeah, which you guys never see, he's going to grab the rod, and we hope it gives him a good tussle like the previous one. Well, actually, I hope it's not as much half that. <laughs> Okay, now this is going to be tricky. Here we go, sorry guys. We were dangling around everywhere there. Notice the bend in this rod compared to other rods. This is a very unique design, the Grind Elite. How it bends, you sit with most of the action in the tip but not too much. But that reduces the, the pressure you've got on your back and it makes you less tired as well as it assists in the cast. How's that feeling Ray? Very nice. That feels good man. It's Ray, our main man Ray. There's something I must tell you. Is there's a rule in fishing. When you take the rod to fight the fish, no one may help you. So you have to land it. Okay now gents, they, as you'll see in the back there, there's a big bank where we cast from as I explained. And that's your most difficult part, is getting it over that bank. So once Ray's got that right, it might suck onto the bank like mine did. And then when it comes off, uh, it's a bit easier getting it on. How are you feeling? Nice. <laughs> it feels good. You lie. <laughs> like a cheap word. <laughs> See now it's the stage, right? When you start saying thank you for every meter you get. You say thank you. <laughs> and every meter he takes, you say no thank you. <laughs> Beware of the back, eh? Just go to the front, put your hand in the smile, and then drag it. How did it feel, Ray? Very nice. How's it? Hey, <laughs> best fish. Oh, that's good, a eh? big one. That nice. was a nice one. That was when it reached low, two cars, two fish. They full up now, there's a couple of guys on our left. I see they've also got two. It's about five, six guys there. They also got two and it looks like they're fighting a third one. So I bet you every cast is gonna be a diamond. So we're gonna have, carry on here. I'm gonna wait for the tide to push again and see for different formation, different ways of catching them. And maybe still trying to find a sandy and a honeycomb. So join us next time and see if we come right with any other species.